This chapter deals with the Malthus model and the question why income per capita stagnated prior to the Industrial Revolution. A good textbook treatment uh, can be found in the book by David Weil, Economic Growth, uh, published by Dela and Francis in 2012. We are already familiar with this graph from the chapter on the stylized facts of economic growth. It is taken from Our World in Data, a very interesting uh, website where you can find a lot of uh, interesting cross-country data on economic development. And it depicts per capita GDP or per capita income over the last 2000 years for a selected list of countries such as the United States, France, the United Kingdom, and so on. And what we observe there is that basically prior to the 19th century, income per capita stagnated in all of these countries and was at a very low level close to subsistence. So the vast majority of the population in these countries were very poor, inequality was low because everybody was poor, and economic growth as we know it nowadays with persistent increases in per capita income year on year, that is a rather new phenomenon that occurred over the last 200 years but not before. And of course, the central question uh, that looms here is, why did income per capita stagnate prior to the Industrial Revolution? We know from growth theory, the solo model or models of endogenous technological progress, that the central driving force of long-run economic growth is technological progress, improvements in productivity that go back to technological progress, basically. Now, a superficial answer to the question why income per capita GDP stagnated before uh, 1800 would be to say that, well, perhaps there was no technological progress. But this is not true. We know that technological progress took place, so there were technological improvements that increased productivity, for example, in agriculture, but technological progress um, occurred at a slow pace. However, um, it was positive and a per capita income did not rise at the same rate as technological progress took place. So prior to the year 1800, uh, something else must have been going on that constrained economic uh, progress. And um, what we had actually was that prior to the Industrial Revolution, better technology mainly raised the population size but not economic well-being in terms of uh, incomes. Now, how can we explain these dynamics? Now, the first who explained these dynamics was Thomas Malthus in his famous work, An Essay on the Principle of Population, published in 1798. And that's interesting because it's almost exactly the time at which things started to change. So prior to 1800, there was stagnation, and that is what uh, Thomas Malthus observed and wanted to explain. And only afterwards, we observed um, uh, persistent increases in per capita income and per capita GDP. Now, what Thomas Malthus observed was that if there was technological progress that increased productivity in agriculture, so that a given amount of land yielded more crops, then this made people better off. And for example, allowed them to feed more children. And at that time, the relationship between income per capita and the number of children was positive. So if there was an increase in income or an increase in the amount uh, of agricultural production that allowed to feed more children, then people also, all, um, also had more children. So if incomes increased due to such a technological progress, then in the short run um, also the num so the, in the short run incomes rose and then the number of children rose and that uh, led to a situation where in the medium to long run per capita income again decreased so the population size rose but per capita gdp did not rose uh, uh, did not rise and so the prediction of thomas malthus was that whenever incomes would rise this is counteracted by an increase in population growth and we will never be able to observe uh, persistent increases in living standards. And that's also the reason why economics is uh, often called the dismal science. How does the Malthus model work and how can it be explained uh, graphically? For this, um, I have here two diagrams. At the, in the top diagram, I display the relationship between the population size and uh, per capita income. 
and in the bottom diagram I depict the relationship between population growth and per capita income. Now assume for a moment that there is no technological progress. You have a given amount of land and agricultural production and now uh, what happens if we have a larger population size then of course output per capita or per worker would be lower because we have more people, no technological progress. So if we divide the, num the, the amount of uh, crops that can be produced on the given land by a larger population, then we get a lower per capita income. And by contrast, if the population size is uh, smaller, uh, we have fewer people for the same technologies and the same amount of land, and therefore per capita income, per capita GDP would be higher in this case. So we have a negative relationship between the population size and income per capita here. At some point we would have a population size that is stable and this is the population size that can be sustained for a certain level of technologies because there uh, the agricultural production is uh, so high that it can sustain the population but not lead to population growth. So that would be a steady state population that does not change over time without technological progress. And this is a level where the population lives close to the subsistence level of um, consumption. Because if uh, incomes were lower, then uh, people would starve and the population would shrink. And if incomes were higher, then people would have more children. And that's what we uh, see in the bottom uh, picture that depicts the relationship between population growth and income. And as I said before, in Malthusian times, this relationship was positive. So if incomes increased, then population growth also increased because families could feed more children. So agricultural production was higher, such that people could have more children. Of course, this steady state level of the population is then associated with a population growth rate of zero in, if there is no technological progress, and that would be a stable situation. So you would see uh, stagnation of uh, per capita income and a constant population and so on without technological progress. At this steady state, we would have a constant per capita income, a constant population size, and the population growth rate would therefore be zero. Now, however, we assume that technological progress takes place and this technological progress increases productivity in agriculture. So this could, for example, be the introduction of the plow, but there could also be other uh, examples. And this now raises income such that the uh, relationship between the population size and per capita income shifts to the right. In the graph, this means that uh, the curve that we had before for a uh, constant population L star old that shifts to the right, meaning that the per capita income increased for the constant population. So these people are now better off, have a higher income level. However, this in turn means that the population growth rate is not anymore zero. Instead, these people who have a higher income level can afford more children and therefore the fertility rate increases and population growth increases. So the population growth rate increases above zero and uh, the population size starts to increase. And this would now imply for a constant uh, level of technology again, that uh, the population size increases. We move along this curve uh, up to a new higher population level until we again reach a population size at which income is close to subsistence and the population growth rate is zero. So all that happened through this technological progress that led to a higher productivity and higher incomes in the short run was that the population size increased but per capita GDP did not increase. So we would have this situation, the new relationship between the population size and per capita GDP a larger population, L star new, but still the same old level of per capita income. So essentially this model then explains that technological progress can take place, but it does not raise income uh, sustainably. It only raises per capita income temporarily. However, then fertility increases 
the population size increases and this leads to a situation where in the long run income per capita is again close to the subsistence level and countries that are then technologically more advanced prior to uh, the industrial revolution were not richer but only had a denser population basically so more um, people could be fed by a given amount of land essentially that's what population size uh, population density is so agricultural productivity growth prior to the year 1800 led predominantly to population growth but the interesting thing was that uh, almost exactly at the time when Malthus wrote his essay uh, things started to change completely because then we had the uh, demographic transition uh, that started and the industrial revolution and during the demographic transition basically the relationship between income per capita and fertility started to reverse so that families with higher incomes started to have fewer children and therefore this mechanism that sustained a Malthusian trap so a poverty trap that is induced by high popul uh, population growth actually that vanished and uh, gave rise to sustained uh, rises in per capita GDP as we were able to observe them over the last 200 years. And for the mechanisms how this worked, uh, you can um, watch the video on unified growth theory where basically Odette Gallo and David Weil developed a theory in the year 2000, in a paper in the year 2000, where they explain uh, this endogenous escape from the Malthusian trap within a consistent um, theory that is able to explain the Malthusian stagnation so it captures the Malthusian model as a special case but then also captures sustained economic growth as another special case after the transition um, from stagnation to economic growth that uh, happens endogenously in this framework.